Shalom. I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwadash. Double honors and el- um, <laughs> double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who taught me this 100% truth and rule well. Shalom to the Akim and the Akwaf listening in today. I'm back at you with another lesson entitled The Wicked Will Not Escape Their Destruction. You know, because right now the wicked are in that that mirth spirit. What what does it mean by mirth? You know, they're in that joyous spirit. You know, they see that restrictions are being lifted, and you know they're all about living their best life, and things seem to be going back to so called normal. So you know, they're not they're not focused on seeking the heavenly Father. You know, they're not focused on seeking Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, whilst he may be found. Okay. And, and and you know that that goes for the foolish. Alright. Um I wasn't meant to bring out the scripture, but let me see if I can find it now. Just bear with me. Uh Ecclesiastes seven <clears throat> verse four. Uh well you know what? Let's start at let's start at verse two. Ecclesiastes seven verse two and it reads it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. You know, so we're not meant to be in that living our best life spirit. You know, we're meant to be seeking Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, whilst he may be found, so that Lord willing, we can be ex- ex- exempt from that judgment that's about to take place on this planet Earth. Okay, verse 3 Sorrow is better than laughter, for by sadness the countenance. Beca- sorry, Salaki, for by, for by the sadness of the countenance the heart is made better. You know, there's a famous saying, I'm not sure how famous it is, but I, I certainly use it quite a lot. And I always say that you grow through what you go through. You know, a lot of the times we like to avoid the hard times and the trials and the tribulations but those are the things that make us you know i wouldn't change anything about my journey so far and it's definitely been rough you know but it you know it's what's chiseled me and what's made me the man that i am today and the things that i will go through in the future is what's also gonna you know shape me into the man that i'm that that that, you know the most high wants me to, to become all right because at the end of the day this is the will of the Most High. It's just a matter of what 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 part do we play in the Most High's will? Will we be a part of the elect? Will we be damned to destructions like the two third uh, the two third wicked Israelites and the heathen nations? You know, so that's what it's all about. Ecclesiastes seven verse four: The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. So the fools are in that living their best life spirit, you know, hot girl summer, you know, do as thou wilt, you know. That's that's the hot. That's where that's where uh, um, um, the minds of the foolish are at. Okay. So, you know, the 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 wise would rather suffer now, and then potentially be saved when Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, uh, you know, brings forth that judgment. Rather than, you know, ignorance is bliss. Let me just ignore all the signs of the times and just hope for the best or hope that the Heavenly Father never shows up. All right, that's a, that's a foolish thing because, look, not one of these prophecies shall fail, man. It says in the scriptures that that his word will not return unto him void. And let me see if I can quickly bring that out. Okay, I wasn't even, these two scriptures, I wasn't even meant to bring out, but, you know, that's the spirit. Let me see if I can get that. Isaiah 55 verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. So what does that mean? That means that every single word you see written here in the scriptures, from the Old Testament to the New Testament to the Apocrypha, it's, it's either come to pass or is going to come to pass or is coming to pass as we speak. You know, a perfect example um, um, of, of a scripture that's coming to pass 
Let me just finish Isaiah 55 and 11 quickly. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing where the two are sent it. So you can count on the words that we read in the scriptures. Okay, you can count on, on, on these things actually coming to pass, man. Why? Because, you know, you, you have these, these scholars or these uh, archaeologists who actually, they read the scriptures and they go to these places like, you know, they've located Noah's Ark. They located the, uh, um, the chariots of, the, you know, the wheels of the chariots of, of Pharaoh's army when they chased the Israelites through the Red Sea. And, you know, they, 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 they found it in the bottom of the seas in the area, man. So you can count on the words of these scriptures coming to pass. All right. It says, you know, the heavenly father's council shall stand. And if it was of man, then it wouldn't stand. And, you know, a lot of these other councils, yeah, these, these false doctrines, these false beliefs, they're not going to stand in that day, man. All right. Um... So what was I looking for? Just to, you know, uh, just an example of, of, you know, this Bible is literally a living document. Uh, um, Isaiah 13, verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes. Now, who's the Medes? The Medes are the Russians. Rush against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. And that's happening right now, man. The Heavenly Father, he's stirring up the spirit of the Medes right now. This is what's happening right now. How do you know this? You see it on the news every day, okay? And they're, they're not regarding, uh, 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 you know, America's thrown all these sanctions at Russia. They're not regarding, uh, um, you know, the financial implications that their actions are, 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 are creating, okay? It says, which shall not regard silver... And as for gold, they shall not uh, delight in it because obviously before this money was cash, it was silver and gold, okay? And they don't care how, as I said, they don't care how, how much of an impact their decisions, their actions are, are, are you know, affecting their, their, their currency or, you know, their financial situation, okay? Verse 18, their bowls, which is what uh, ultimately is, is their... <laughs> Excuse me. Is there missiles? Yeah, your modern day bow is your missiles. It says their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare the their children. Now in Ukraine, they have a little protest where they're literally leaving uh, 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 prams, pushchairs, buggies in in in, in a certain city. In Ukraine, representing the 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 you know the loss of children from the actions of Russia. So as you can see, these the scriptures is a living document, man, and none of these none of these words shall fail. So it'd be a foolish thing, it'd be a stupid thing to doubt uh, the credibility of the scriptures. You know, it would be a foolish thing. But ultimately, we understand that the under true understanding. Of the scriptures is not given to everyone okay the most high is not waking up everyone because if he's to wake up everyone then how then he 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 would be considered a liar man because then you wouldn't have the the wicked to be destroyed and the two-third israelites okay if everyone just woke up to this truth so only a remnant as it is written that are chosen are going to wake up to this truth all right so that's why it reads here in 2nd Ezra chapter 15, um, you know, let's start at the top. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. What does it mean to prophesy? It means to say before, to say before it happens, right? Before we was known as prophets, we was known as seers because we could, you know, see into the future and, and forewarn the people of what's to come, all right? The Heavenly Father, he always sent forth his prophets to, 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 to let the people know what the Heavenly Father is about to do. All right. Whether they would hear or forbear, pursuant to Ecclesi um, Ezekiel. Yeah. Whether they would hear or forbear, you know, he always sent forth his men to preach the word 
before the Most High brought down his destruction, man. His judgment. All right. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in my in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So when really and truly, when you're bucking up against these prophets, you're really bucking up against the Heavenly Father, man. Because the prophets are the Heavenly Father's mouthpiece. So if you ain't trying to hearken on to what they're saying and what, uh, and what they're trying to bring forth to you, then really you're, you're, you're going against the Heavenly Father, man. And as I always bring up, Hebrews 10 and 31, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. All right? We don't want to experience that judgment, which is why we do the things to please, that please the Heavenly Father in hopes that we may be saved. Okay? Verse 2. And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. So that means that every every word written in the scriptures is going to come to pass if it hasn't done so already or is coming to pass right now as we speak. And I already gave you an example of that in Isaiah 13, 17. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 17 down to 18. All right. Verse 3. 2nd Ezra 15, verse 3. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity, which means your unbelief, of them trouble thee that speak against them. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. And how are they going to die? Verse 5. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. So some are going to die via the sword, some via famine, some via... Some are just going to be put to death and in destruction, you know? So the plagues are being sent forth, man, just like in the days of Egypt. Because guess what? We're in modern day Egypt, man. Okay. Let's go to First John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You can't serve two masters, man. You're either going to bow down to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai or down to Satan, man. And guess what? Majority of the world bow down to Satan, whether they realise it or not. Some people are aware of it, most people aren't. Okay? Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You know? So, really and truly, we shouldn't even be giving a shit about, about, about the things of the world, man. Why? Because we understand that it soon passeth away, man. You know? Verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the Most High abideth forever, man. And we're doing the will of the Most High right now. How are we doing that? You know, we're, 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 we're keeping the law, statutes and commandments to the best of our ability. Because we know that ultimately we can't keep them in its entirety you know in this wicked uh, society okay and uh you know we're 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 we're, we're teaching this this truth right we're bringing forth his word that's how we're doing the will of the heavenly father man you know let me see if i can find this scripture the spirit's got me bringing out scriptures i haven't even lined up but that's 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 the spirit man uh Second Peter chapter 3 verse 11 Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved What manner of persons ought ye to be In all holy conversation and godliness So this, this is how we're meant to be spending our time man You know we're not meant to be spending our time Getting involved in folly man Being in that mirth spirit When we know that this world soon passeth away Alright we're meant to be verse 12 Second Peter 3 verse 12 Looking for and hasten unto the coming day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Because that fire is coming, man. By way of that of, the, of those nuclear missiles and those chariots when Yahweh Shai returns with, with, with the army of angels, man. All right. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness so this is what we're we're striving for man we want to be the first fruits the elect to uh you know never taste death and to actually see uh um the kingdom of israel um um 
from from the start, from the very beginning, you know, we want to be a part of shackle, putting these devils in chains and shackling them up and, you know, bringing them into captivity. We want to be a part of that, man. We don't want to come back, you know, through the loins of the elect as a two-third wicked Israelite, ultimately brought back in our right minds through the loins of the elect and, and, and you know, basically... Uh, you know we're, we're, we're late to the party man You know We want to be at the beginning of this thing We want to We want Yahweh Shai To you know Put the crowns on our heads In the chariots And say well done My faithful servant man That's why we That's why we push forth Push forth this truth Alright From here let's go to the book of Proverbs uh, Chapter 30 Verse 12 There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes And yet is not washed from their filthiness And we're in that generation right now man You know pride is at an all time high right now Okay You know People think they're so righteous And that they, 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 they don't do any wrong And you know that they've got all the answers And they've got it all figured out man But guess what they're soon going to learn that they don't have it all figured out. All right? When the most as jacking their ass up, man, they're going to realise, shit, we had it all wrong. But guess what? Then shall they know that a prophet has been amongst them, man. Because you... Look, we're in the age of information right now. You can't say you have not heard the words of this truth, man. You've got the prophets on the highways and byways. You've got the videos out on these various streaming platforms. You know? You can't say you didn't hear this truth, man. Okay? Verse 13. Proverbs 30 and 13. There is a generation. Oh, how lofty are their eyes. And their eyelids are lifted up. Meaning, you know, they're so prideful, man. You know? And pride goeth, cometh before a fool. So, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, he's, gonna, he's, gonna, he's coming back at the height of pride, man. Which means that destruction is gonna be it's gonna be drastic, it's gonna be fatal. Cause you're coming back at the height of pride, man. Alright? You already know that that pride is gonna lead to your destruction. And if you don't know, you're gonna learn the hard way, man. From there, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. Sorry, not Wisdom of Solomon. Sirach. Ecclesiasticus chapter 39. Verse 24. And it reads, as his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. So ultimately, you know, not you, not everyone can be a part of the elect. The elects are gonna are gonna you know they're gonna hear this word and they're gonna hearken onto it and they're gonna understand it, man, and they're gonna have that fear of the Lord instilled in them. So they're gonna do the things that please the heavenly Father. All right, but the but you know. When the wicked hear this word, it's a snare unto them, meaning that that you know, this word basically it doesn't work in their favor, man. It basically comes against them because you know, uh what was I gonna say? Salaki, you. you know, it's like the, it's like the dog returning unto his own vomit, man. Which the scripture gives an example of that, where you know, you're given the ways. Of light, the ways of righteousness, but you choose to to go back into the world, man, because you're reassured by that false hope, you know. Let's jump down here to verse twenty-eight, Ecclesiasticus thirty-nine and twenty-eight. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they shall pour out their force and appease, which means to please, the wrath of him that made them. And who made them? The Heavenly Father. Yeah? Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Because the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, gave his son, Yahweh Shai, the blueprint. Okay? And uh, we're already seeing examples of this now, man. You got you got Jake's, you know, uh, uh, like in London, we've got a heavily Jewish area. In uh, Stamford Hill And you know These Jakes have just been Been going crazy man Just just coming up against these These so called Jews You know And just, just attacking them Unprovoked 
You know, you've got you've got uh, uh, baby mamas getting shot down by 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 the baby dads. You know, all all sorts of madness is going on, man. These are the spirits created for vengeance. All right. Let's go down to verse twenty nine. Fire and hail, and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance, and you're going to see that very soon. Teeth of wild beasts. And scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. So listen, man. It, look, people ain't just gonna be. Uh, they just ain't gonna be killed by nuclear destruction, man. You know, there's certain people that are gonna face these other various gruesome deaths. All right. Um. Let me. Show you that in uh, I believe it's Jeremiah 15 If I'm not mistaken Jeremiah 15 verse 2 And it shall come to pass If they say unto thee Whether shall we go forth Thou shalt tell them Thus saith the Lord Such as are for death to death And such as are for the sword to sword And such as are for the famine to famine and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. So everyone is being cast in their lots, man. Not everyone is going to face that 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 nuclear fire, all right. But they're going to be they're going to be destroyed by the various other plagues that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is about to send forth. Okay, verse three. And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Most High: the sword to slay, and the dogs to tear, and the fowls. Of the heaven and the beast of the earth to devour and destroy. Going back to Hebrews ten and thirty one, it's a fearful, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, man. Which is why we have to we have to take this truth seriously. Okay, this truth is not a joke, because none of these words shall fail, man. Everything that I've just everything that I've said has come out of the scriptures. And guess what? As scary as it may seem, as it might sound. Okay, none of these shall fail. So all of these things are going to happen, man. Whether you decide to believe it or not, these things are going to happen. Okay. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And this devil Esau, the so-called white man, He's gone ahead and he's flipped this place upside down, man. You know? Everything, everything, everything is backwards. You know? you got people rejoicing in wickedness and people uh, uh, slandering righteousness. All right? That's, the, that's the, the wicked vibration that Sleazy E is pushing forth throughout the planet Earth. Isaiah 5 and 21... Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. So you see, pride has deceived a lot of you people, man, especially you women. A lot of you women are filled with pride, misindependent. I don't need a man. You know, I'm good on my own. Well, guess what, honey? We're going to see about that in that day. You know, pursuing to Isaiah 4 and 1, in that day, seven women, which seven is, represents the number of completion, so... Could be an innumerable amount of women. Seven women shall take hold of one man. Okay, why? Because they wanna they wanna be saved from that reproach, man, for the calamities that are about to befall the planet Earth, man. When the, when the Most High brings that judgment, trust me, you're gonna you're gonna return back to your primal instincts, man. You ain't gonna be thinking you're all boss bitch, miss independent. I don't need a man. I'm going on my own. I'm strong. Yeah, we gonna see about that, honey. All right. From there, let's go to First Corinthians chapter three. Verse eighteen. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Alright? So you know in order for you to, 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 to understand the scriptures, you need to be born again, man. What does that mean? It means you need to unlearn 
the indoctrination and you need to relearn the ways of the truth. Okay? Verse 19, for the, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the Most High. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. So, you know, you, all you people that think that you got it figured out, but you don't even know the names of Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. You don't even know who salvation is for. You don't even know who the true Israelites of the Bible of, who the Bible speaks of are. Well, then guess what? You're wise in your own eyes, man. And, and, and the Most High, He's going to take the wise, the so called wise, in their own craftiness, man. Which means that your, your, your false philosophies are going to come up against you in that day. If they haven't done so already, man. Salaki. <clears throat> That's why it says here in 1 Corinthians 3 and 20. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. They are vanity, man. All right. And you're going to see that. Unfortunately, a lot of you are going to have to learn that the hard way, man. All right. See, the most high is cold with it, man. This is why you have to fear the Lord, man. But ultimately, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. So you can't, you can't get this truth if you don't even fear the Heavenly Father, man. You know, and, and to be fair, the reason why this world is in the fucked up predicament that it's in is because you guys don't fear the, the Heavenly Father, man. Because if you feared the Heavenly Father and knew of his judgments and how he operated, well, guess what? Your ass would be in line, man. But because we're under sleazy ease, wicked vibration, you know, do what thou wilt and, and, and you know, what does it say in Ecclesiastes 8 and 11? Because the... Uh, 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 the punishment of the wicked is not executed speedily. So therefore, you think that you can just go ahead and, and do whatever the hell you want and nothing is going to happen to you, man. Well, guess what? Again, you've been greatly deceived, man. And you're going to see that very soon. Very, very soon. Let's go here to Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white. Meaning what? We're going to be cleansed by this word, man. And who's that many? Ultimately, that's that elect. The 144,000 and that one third, that great multitude. You know, we're the ones being purified. Lord willing, I'll be a part of the elect myself, you know. Lord willing, we be a part of the elect. The ones listening into this video in truth and sincerity. Um, you know, we're the ones being purified and made white and tried and tried. Okay, doesn't it say in Sirach 2 and 5? For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So the Lord, he's constantly trying his elect, man. Like, are you, are you really my people? You know, are you really my true elect? And not everyone is going to fail that test, man. But guess what? The ones who fail were never a part of the elect in the first place, man. That just goes to show you how cold the Heavenly Father is with this thing, man. Hebrews 10 and 31 It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power Alright So Daniel 12 and 10 Many shall be purified and made white and tried But the wicked shall do wickedly And none of the wicked shall understand But the wise shall understand So a lot of this, the wicked of this world Don't even understand that what they're doing is wicked You know they think they're going to be saved Because they gave money to that homeless person on the street but they still can't tell you the true names of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Or who the true Israelites are of the Bible. You know? And ultimately, it's the true understanding of the scriptures and the wisdom and knowledge that's going to save us. You know? Having that right doctrine. Okay? Not by, oh yeah, you helped the elderly lady cross the road, man. That's not, that's not what's going to lead you to salvation. You can do that all you like, but if you still don't know the true names of the Heavenly Father or the true understanding of this book, you ain't going to be saved. Simple as. There's no way around it, man. That's just the cold, harsh bit of truth. All right. Let's go from there to Proverbs 21. Uh, points at verse 2, but you know what? I'm going to start at the top in which it reads, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it 
whithersoever he will. So what does that mean? That means that the Heavenly Father is the one that's actually controlling Putin to create these to to do these heinous acts, man. These 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 war crimes, all right? It was actually it was actually sanctioned in the heavens, man, before the 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 um you know the action was carried out here on planet Earth. Because pursuant to Isaiah 45 and 7, the most high he creates the good and the evil, man. You know? I the Lord do all these things. Alright. Proverbs 21 verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the heart. So you see, a lot of you people uh, uh, are deceived by, by your minds, man. You genuinely think that you've got it all figured out and that you're the most righteous person in the world and, that, and that, you know, you should be exempt from judgment. You know, but let me see if I can find this scripture here. I believe it's Jeremiah 17 verse 9. Here we are. The heart is deceitful, which the heart means your mind. La'ab in Hebrew. Yeah. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So, if your wisdom is not going back to the scriptures, and that's the true breakdown of the scriptures, then ultimately, you've been deceived by your heart, man. Which is desperately wicked. So, you're going to be sitting there thinking, you really have it all figured out. And really, you don't. Alright? Let's close out here. In Proverbs 11 verse 5 The righteousness of the perfect Shall direct his way But the wicked Shall fall by his own Wickedness Okay Verse 6 Just to re-establish that point again Worded slightly different The righteousness of the upright Shall deliver them But the transgressors so lucky, But the transgressors Shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Let's jump down to verse 8 just to make that point once again. And it's worded slightly differently. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. All right. So hopefully this lesson was edifying. And until the next time, I say shalom.